HBL PSL Season 8 got off to an electrifying start. A grand opening ceremony followed by a riveting face-off. Now it's the turn of the City of Lights to host a star-studded contest. Holding centre stage today will be the HBL PSL's leading run-getter and one of the modern greats. He may have shifted his allegiance, but the batting maestro is hungry for runs yet again. The league's most successful bowler is looking to recreate his vintage magic. A rising star of Pakistan cricket is keen to blaze his way to the top. Up against them will be one of the ageless wonders of the cricket world. Can this maverick help the home team swing things their way? Will their captain inspire the Karachi Kings script a turnaround after a forgettable last season? Or will the yellow storm blow the home side away? Hello and welcome to National Bank Cricket Stadium. Once again, we are back for match number two. And it is the home side uh, Karachi Kings that we've seen in action for the first time in the HBL PSL Season 8. And they are up against Peshawar Zalmi. Great to be here in Karachi. We're here for match number two. What an exhilarating finish that we saw yesterday. It was just the opening game and it's nice to be back at the pit side. I've been joined by a new set of guests, obviously. Some old ones, some new ones. Uh, some new ones, I'd like to call them, but they've actually been part of our crew for a very long time. But new for now, because I'm introducing them for the first time. I've been joined by Danny Morrison, the ever-smiling Danny Morrison. Happy and birthday, Zaini. All right, all right. Right in there. <laughs> That's always a nice start, isn't it, when I get that birthday wish. But nice to have you back, Paz. Yeah. Oh, well, I've yeah. just turned 16. I've just turned 16. You know, sweet 16. 17, yeah. <laughs> uh, great to have you guys back. Um, Baz, obviously you're a regular at, at the Pitch Side Show. Danny, we're back for yet another HPL PSL Season 8. You've been a regular. Mm. What are you looking forward to most in this one? Well, I'm, I'm simply looking forward to, I think, good surfaces. I think that's really key in terms of T20 cricket. Uh, been here regularly and uh, quite recently, last with a, well, a bilateral series with New Zealand. So I'm looking forward to these young guys getting an opportunity and some, of course, some big names doing their thing. And, and again, like last night, as you just mentioned, some close games and some really exciting encounters. Yeah, Baz, I mean, every year we have this fresh talent that comes through PSL, whether it's fast bowlers or batters. And, you know, we've seen some names that we've seen them perform in the domestic. And now they're basically have that opportunity to do the same in the HPL PSL. I mean, any names that stick out in your mind? I think Saim Ayub, left-hander, who's had a very good last 12 months or so, all eyes will be on him, how he develops, how he, he performs before yesterday with those really quick bowling in Multan. So, yeah, every time you get these emerging players who then go on and become real superstars, and PSL is the stepping stone. Another one is Kasim Akram, who's done uh, really well throughout the domestic season. Also, he's come up through the ranks under 19 and now sort of a, a really good all-rounder. So you look at these guys and you think this is the platform that actually you step onto and then go on for bigger things. Right, a couple of changes, a couple of trades that have happened uh, in all the teams that we've seen so far. Let's have a look at the Karachi Kings squad, what it's looking like. Um, a few changes that we've seen. Imad Nassim obviously comes back as the captain, Danny. Mm. And uh, th the big news, of course, is that Babar Azam is no longer there oh. in Karachi Kings. But he's here tonight. But, uh, he, he is here tonight in the other side. But we've got somebody like Imran Tahir and Matthew Wade. Let's not forget his performance in that semi-final against Pakistan in 2021. Yeah, and that, they've been, they were disappointing last year. I think fans 
all around Pakistan will appreciate they had a pretty tough season, didn't go to plan. So, yeah, they're expecting a real turnaround in 2023. Uh, around into Ben Cutting, of course, his wife's on the way here. Aaron's here very shortly. So he was quite buoyant, quite excited to be back, like a lot of us. And again, you know, again, those usual suspects that we all know and see, uh, they want to perform and they want to make the most of another opportunity playing in a franchise tournament like this. What about Peshawar Zalmi then? I mean, of course, you know, it, it, it's the big news when we talk about that trade that happened, Babar Azam going to Zalmi, but Shweb Malik is now, you know, he's he's going to be seen in the Karachi Kings uh, colours. So that's an interesting trade that happened. Yeah, a bit of transition for Peshawar Zalmi and how they progress. They're normally a side which packs themselves on fast bowling. This time around, they've got a few spinners in the mix. Darren Sami also talks about how excited he is with the deduction of somebody like an Amir Jamal, fast bowler. Then you've got Sufyan Mukim, a left arm leg spinner, a wrist spinner. So that sort of excites them. But you can't look any further than what has happened. Babur Azam goes over to Peshawar Zalmi, becomes captain. Imad Wasim becomes captain of, of Karachi Kings. And he also comes up with a statement so that statement will spur something on i think the rivalry has already gone up a notch and i think both captains now will have something to prove in the very first game it definitely works as an incentive danny i mean when you look at uh, babar azam he's been part of karachi kings since the start of the hpl psl and now he'll be seen in different colors all together and you know there's been a lot of talk around this match as well because of what's happened so it's exciting stuff. Yeah, and look, he's just getting his cap there from Darren Sammy, of course, a stalwart himself of Zalmi. Uh, so good to see that he stayed involved, Darren Sammy, and presenting the caps. Uh, yeah, it's a strange feeling. It must, it must be for these guys, particularly the likes of Baba Azam, because he's such a big status player and he's from another big city, another big franchise in Karachi Kings. But they'll tell you, hey, look, we're professionals. This is what we do. We jump around. Franchise T20, you can move around a lot. And as Baz had just mentioned, uh, points to prove, captains always do. And let's see how quickly Bubba can settle in to his new franchise. And, and hopefully, I say hopefully from uh, Peshawar's point of view, that he does really well. I mean, you, when you talk about Baba Razam, obviously moving to Peshawar Zalmi Baz, I mean, do you think that, how does that impact Karachi Kings? Because he was an integral part of the squad, do you think it's a move that's going to benefit him personally? Look, Karachi had a really poor season last time around and something had to give, something had to change. They went in this direction. I think Baba now going to Peshawar Zalmi with, with that baggage of his previous team not doing too well and him traded to another franchise will have a point to prove, well, look, it's not about me, it's about your team. We will now, Peshawar Zalmi will beat you and make sure that I lead this side, which is already a very consistent side, to greater heights. I think the only thing that Peshawar Zalmi want now is to win the title because over the seasons they've been so consistent and they're thinking that every time they come close, for a few years now they've come close and not won it. Barber's icing on the cake would be if they go all the way. Uh, that would be the icing on the cake. I mean, we've seen turnarounds with Lahore Kalandas, you know, them winning last year. So it can happen for Karachi Kings as well. Um, Shweb Malik, you know, we, we all sort of <laughs> ran into him a couple of minutes ago. He's aging backwards, isn't he? Are you giving me a hard time about age? <laughs> I mean, look at Shweb. I think I might have to get a little fitter, a little leaner like you, and put the boots back on because there's an incentive, <laughs> clearly, to keep playing. And I think the passion, on a serious note, I think when you look at Shweb, what a wonderful consummate pro he's been. He's looked after himself. He's wanted to eke out every little ounce of talent that he's got to keep playing. So um, I've got no qualms about him. I think he's a, a great asset to come into the Kings. Well, of course, we're talking about the big news here, which is all about Babar Azam going to Peshawar Zalmi. He's leading the side as well. And how does that impact both the sides? What kind of contributions has he made towards Karachi Kings? Let's have a look at the numbers game.
when we look at the numbers, um, you know, we, we of course we see Babar Azam and his contributions towards Karachi Kings. This pretty much tells you a story. Highest percentage of runs by batters in teams totals since uh, uh, since 2020. Babar Azam 25 percent, and then you look at Shweb Malik, and he's also got that contribution of 18 percent as well. So I mean. It just tells you how important he was. Of course, the team didn't do well, but I'm just talking about him as an individual being part of the side. When his team did win the cup, it was because of him. He didn't play it so well. Um, both these players, obviously, they're big players. The big players in their sides, they'll contribute a lot. You've got Barbara Azuma opens the innings and, and gets a lot of those runs. He's got more opportunity to get those runs. He is a class that we know that. But for somebody like Shweb Malik who comes in the middle order and get a, a high percentage of runs, he has to get them quickly. He has to make sure that they're impactful and his contribution is absolutely brilliant as well. There's a number of openers in there. Mm -hmm. There's only Shweb Malik who's a middle order player. You look at Fakhar Zaman, Rizwan, Shan Masood, Babar Azam, all openers. Only Shweb Malik in the middle order, but he, because of the fact that he makes such a big impact in terms of runs and in terms of the speed that he makes him at, makes him such an important player. Yeah, he's super fit and he's been running hard and that's why he's perhaps part of the Karachi Kings squad as well. That was our numbers game for you. All right, uh, really enjoying this talk about Babar Azam and the trade that's happened. Shweb Malik will be seen in Karachi Kings. Babar Azam with Peshawar Zalmi. And we're on now building up towards uh, the toss and the pitch report. All of that after the break. Back here at the pit side show and uh, we're all building up towards this one. It's the home side taking on Peshawar Zalmi and uh, they've only won one game last year out of the 10 games that they played. So they'll be looking some kind of, for some kind of redemption of sorts. Uh, there's been a pep talk obviously with Seem Akram in charge of things, steadying that ship and hoping that they can start off on a winning note under the captaincy of Imad Vaseem. Mohammad Amir obviously will be seen in action once again last year. Remember, he was injured. So it'll be good to see them really uh, getting into the mix of things, getting into that groove. And we'll be seeing him in action after that BBL, a successful BBL for Mohammad Amir. Now, we're obviously building up towards the game. And one thing that we've uh, seen today is that Vern Philander has joined our comms team. Remember, he was also the bowling coach of the Pakistan side. And he has a few tips to share. He's out there with Aruj Mumtaz. I've got a very special guest with me, the former bowling consultant for the Pakistan national team, Vernon Philander. Vernon, thanks for joining us on the commentary panel with us now, but let's dig into your the bowling expertise. We talk about the T20 game. How has bowling changed con considering the modern innovations that batters bring about now? Yeah, I think it's, it's so good to be back in Pakistan, Karachi, of course. I think for me, the most important part of, of bowling in the T20 game is control. I think if you have the new ball in hand with a bit of swing on offer, you want to make sure that you utilize that to the best of your ability. For me, the one thing that always stood out is that you want to bring those stumps into play especially in the first six overs we've all seen it the ball might move around you might beat the bat on the other occasion but if batsmen get in on a t20 game they can hurt you so for me it, it, it's making sure that you, you you get to be effective and understand you know what's going to make you effective so for me if the ball is swinging away it's perhaps playing with those angles but the most important part is bringing those stumps into play. Bring those stumps into play, but we see players now be so innovative at the crease. They bat deep into the crease, move laterally, and especially the last four or five overs, bowlers can end up leaking a lot of runs. At the death, what would you like to concentrate on in this modern time? Yeah, for me, I, I think the most underutilized delivery in the T20 cricket is still the Yorker. Uh, and I think we saw, saw last night, Saina Freedy, Harris Ralph, absolutely nail the Yorkers. And I think if you bowl it at high pace, it is still a difficult delivery, you know, to negotiate with. And yeah, I'd like to see, you know, bowlers utilize that delivery a lot more in the T20 game. 
Now, you were the national side uh, in the 2021 World Cup. What was the overall experience like? How much talent do we actually have? How impressed were you? I was very impressed. I think one thing that you can't teach bowlers to do, and that's bowl fast. I think, yeah, I, I can teach you control. I can teach you the element of, of, of swing. But one thing you can't do is, 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 yeah, is obviously teach bowlers how to bowl fast. Of course, Pakistan has a rich history of, of fast bowling. Waka, Shaib. Was him, you know, just to name a few. And I think the youngsters really now I say in the free. I mean, how exciting is he? I think Harris Ralph. But the one thing that really stood out for me was understanding the guys, you know, understanding the, the individuals behind those bowlers. I mean, I, I had a long chat with Harris Ralph, you know, where he comes from. Tape ball cricket is massive, yeah. And, 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 and that's the element, you know, that make guys want to bowl fast. So the excitement of wanting to bowl fast is out there. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this tournament and, you know, and which bowlers really going to put up their name in that fast bowling category. Put you on the spot before you head out. Two fast bowlers that you're looking at in this tournament from Pakistan. Yeah, I think I just mentioned it. Uh, Sayin Saifridi and Harris Ralph. I think you know we had a long little uh, four months, you know, working with them, and it'd just be good to see, you know, how they would have grown from there. Some useful insight there by Vern Philander. I mean, we're talking about, you know. What is the right delivery to be bowling at that depth? And we saw yesterday, Danny, that you know you saw Shaheen Afridi and Harris Rauf use those Yorkers to perfection. I mean, what what do you have to say? I mean, what is the right delivery at that point? Yeah, and, and you're right. You, you've got to sum it up quickly, and you might have just disappeared out of the ballpark trying a Yorker, but you've not quite got it right. And I think the thing that Vern was on about, it is undervalued but it is such a key delivery. You get that right, difficult to get up and under and disappear out of the ballpark. But look, there's such good skills of variety these days in T20. Um, the Yorker, as he also mentioned there, Vern, it's a little underrated, but you've got to be good at it. You've got to be confident to release it at the right time and execute it well, because if you're slightly off, man, it disappears. Bazad, you're facing a last over in a match. What's that one ball that you're fearing, uh, you know, as, as a batsman? The free hit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think if you've got pace, we saw that yesterday. If you've got pace, then you can rely on the yoke. If you miss it by six inches, you're still very good. If you've not gone pace, then you have to figure out, do I go into the pace? Do I bow a slow one? Do I go there? But once you've got Shine Shah Fridi, you've got Zaman Khan, you've got Harris Rauf, then all you have to do is back your best delivery which is the Yorker and that came to the fore yesterday we saw that but I tell you to be able to deliver that time and time again that requires a lot of skill. Yeah the execution has been exemplary from those two and you heard it from the boys it's it's all about that pace that we saw yesterday from Shine Chai Afridi and Harris Rov as well. We'll take a short break but we'll leave you with the sights and sounds of Karachi. Well, we had a packed house yesterday in Multan and I can tell you that Karachi is going to be no different. The fans, you can pretty much tell how excited they are. Look at those uh, queues right outside the ground and uh, it's been building up nicely. The buzz is always, always great in the HBL PSL. There you go. Lots of families, lots of young kids uh, in the crowd, you know, supporting their respective sides. And this is really what the HBL PSL is about. It is about the fans, it is about the crowds, and it is for them to come out and watch their star players and support them. Well, we're talking about the fans, we're talking about the buzz around the ground. It's uh, an electrifying atmosphere already. Let's find out how excited they are for the HPL PSL. <laughs>
well, they all have their loyalties and affiliation with their different uh, franchises and I can tell you that the support is extremely pure in the sense we've got all these rivalries going on, lots of yellow in the crowd, Peshawar, Zalmi fans are out there and uh, the home side will be seen in action for the first time in the HBL PSL. Karachi Kings. I can tell you that the noise is already deafening. That's what we love about the HPL PSL. The excitement, the atmosphere and just generally people like to go out and have fun and just support their respective sides. Babar Azam this time will not be in Karachi Kings. He'll be seen in different colors. A yellow kit, Peshawar Zalmi. Still got plenty of fans there and uh, I see that Pakistan jersey there as well. Just great to see. PSL is pretty much like um, it's it's like a social event within Pakistan. Yeah, it's just great to see that kind of atmosphere building up. But we are actually now ready with the toss, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Aruj Mumtaz is out there with the two captains. The HBL PSL 8 has arrived in Karachi and we are ready for the toss at the National Bank Cricket Stadium here in Karachi. I've been joined by the two captains of the ICC match referee, Mr. Ali Nakwi, Imad Vaseem for Karachi Kings and Babar Azam for Peshawar Zalmi. Imad, you have the coin? Imad Vaseem from Karachi Kings have won the toss. Imad, you can see the support out here is getting loud right from the get-go. Uh, yeah, we're going to ball first. Uh, I think uh, it's a new surface, so we don't know. We, we were unsure. So we wanted to ball first here. Okay. In terms of surface, it looks a little bit different. You've got a little bit of grass. What do you make of it as a different surface in Karachi? Look, uh, it, it does not matter. I think, uh, for, for my point of view, they, they stick the surface together. So that's why I think uh, we're not sure what it's going to do. So we try to utilize it as much as possible. Are you putting them into bat? Do you have a total in mind that you would like to stick them to? Uh, it's really hard to say. But uh, once we assess the wicket, uh, I think uh, uh, anything over uh, 150, 160 is a competitive score. So we try to stick them under that. Can you give us an idea of what your team combination is like for this game? Yes, uh, uh, there are a lot of. Uh, this is the first game, so uh, Matthew Wade is playing, Ben Cutting is playing, um, uh, there Andrew Tai is playing, and Imran Tai is playing for, as an overseas, and Amir and Sharjeel and myself we are playing together. All right, thanks for talking to us, and Thank good luck for the Thank game. Babar, if you had won the toss, what would you have done? Uh, we would also bowl first, but uh, toss is not your hand, uh, so we will try to put on runs, uh, runs on the board and pressure on them. Runs on the board, what target would you like? Be happy with in case you set it here. Uh, I think uh, 170, 180 is uh, defendable, so we will try to uh, achieve that target. Well, you've obviously changed franchises, but the crowd is definitely behind you. How good does it feel? Uh, definitely always Karachi sport, uh, even not uh, Karachi and both the teams, uh, I think uh, good to hear you again. Can you also give us an idea of your, what your overseas combination looks like today? Uh, we have a Tokmo uh, and uh, Rajapaksha, Shakim and uh, Jimmy Nisham. All right, Babar, good luck for today. Thanks. Thank and the news from the centre is that Karachi Kings have won the toss and they will have a bowl. Well, Karachi can just joined me over here for looking at the pitch. Nick Knight. Thank you. You've been walking around for a few minutes. What do you make of this? I'm trying to find which pitch we're talking about because it's like <laughs> two different pitches here, isn't it? I mean, it's very, very dry, a bit dusty, a few cracks. And then if you go to that part of the, the pitch, it's like my back garden at home. Even now, this time of year, there's lots of lush grass. So I don't know how it's going to play, but I suppose probably you want to be a friend of the captain today to make sure you're bowling at the right end. <laughs> well, you say that it looks contrastingly different on both sides. What do you think the either side will play up like? Looks like the ball will skid on with the grass over there. Yeah, I think with the new ball, absolutely. I think the quickies will be running in here and trying to hit that green grass. Uh, uh, but that will work in the favour of the batters as well. Don't forget, we'll know that they can hit through the line of the ball. I think as the innings progresses, obviously the spinner's going to want to bowl the far end into this more drier area here. But then I think the quicks will want to bowl that end as well. That's why I say I think you've got to be a bit of a friend of the captain just to make sure you're on at the right end because as the innings progresses I don't think it's going to be easy bowling from this end into the grass well you heard from Nick Nike we'll see what the pitch plays out after the game I guess Well, you heard it. That's the news from the centre. The Karachi Kings have won the toss and they have decided to bowl first. Danny, 
Ahmad Vaseem saying in his uh, interview there that he doesn't know how the pitch is going to play, so he's opted to bowl first. Safe decision? Yeah, I think safety first. It is the first match here in Karachi. The other thing about it too, Zani, is that uh, they've had a lot of cricket here. They've had a lot of bilateral series. They've had test matches. They've had 50 over their T20. So I think all of us here, and Baz included, will be fascinated to see how this 22 yards plays, given what I've just mentioned, and given that we're completely under lights. There's no favouritism of a twilight scenario. Straight out, in the dark, let's get on with it. And hopefully... Interesting, look at that pitch. One's a little bit more hairy at one end, the other one's a bit more like my hairstyle at the other. <laughs> so hopefully it slides on nice and smooth, Baz. Do you think it's going to slide on nice and smooth, Baz? We were here for the New Zealand One Day Series and these pitches have been relayed and they're not quite as good as they were a couple of years before where the ball really slid on. So the question is, if they'll play that way, if they'll be grip and turn. We saw a lot of grip and turn in that one day series, even under light. So it's fascinating, as Danny said, how it will play. Obviously, first game, we want to assess how conditions are and it'll be more difficult, as we've seen in white ball cricket, more difficult to set a target. Now, if it turns, then it'll be very interesting. It will be very interesting because we've got a nice set of spinners on both the sides. Thank you so much, Danny. I'm going to let you go now. Uh, you can go and have your cup of coffee. We'll take a short break and uh, when we do return from the break, we'll be joined by a new guest. Well, we are back here in uh, Karachi for uh, Karachi Kings versus Peshawar Zalmi. And the news from the centre is that Karachi Kings have won the toss and they have decided to bowl first. Well, uh, these are the teams and this is what it looks like for both the sides. Uh, they've got four foreign players. If we talk about Karachi Kings, there's Matthew Wade, Imran Tahir, Andrew Tai and Ben Cutting. In terms of their uh, emerging player, they've got Kasim Akram, whereas if you talk about Peshawar Zalmi, uh, you've got Raja Paksa, we know what kind of a knock he played against Pakistan in that Asia Cup final, Tom Kohler, Kadmo, Jimmy Nisham, and from an emerging uh, category, they've got Sufyam Mukim. Well, I've been joined now by Aruj Mumtaz, Miss Dentist. Aruj, <laughs> great to have you back. Freshly flown in from South Africa. Um, Aruj, I'll talk to you in Urdu. Of course. Tell me that both teams are looking very good. Now, it's obviously the first match. Hai. Karachi Kings have decided to bowl first. There is also a crowd in Karachi. And Karachi is very important to win because the last year, only one match won in 10 matches. I think coming out on top, uh, starting fresh, which will be very important to win the first match. Uh, not because of any other reason, that's your thing, that the jinx of the last year is very important to win the last year. Different look side, good uh, players have uh, procured this time. But Karachi had a few tense faces already. I think that's the thing to start off on the right foot. Uh, toss has been given to them, so hopefully they will be able to restrict Peshawar for a chaseable score. Okay, in Peshawar Zalmi's team, if you look at it, the fact that the foreign players, hai, you know, somebody like Tom Kohler, Cadmo, then you've also got Raja Paksa. Raja Paksa, you will remember all of them in Asia Cup, which they have given performance. Di thi. Basically, who performs against Pakistan, we will see them next time in HBL PSL. Mein dekhte. Um, and then, let's not forget Matthew Wade, he's also there for Karachi Kings. So, कैसे दोनों साइड्स को देखते हैं जलमी की साइड को कैसे देखते हैं बाबर आजम अब आ गए हैं मोहम्मद हारिस हैं उनके पास देखिए जलमी जो उनका जो थियरी थी वो फास्ट बॉलिंग थी थ्रू आउट जो ये पीएसएल्स के लिए इस दफा ऐसे लग रहा है कि शायद उस थियरी से ये दूसरी तरफ गए हैं जाहिर है बहाब रियाज हैं लेकिन वो अब अपने करियर के एंड वाले हिस्से में आ गए हैं तो मेरे ख्याल स्पिनर्स पे इन्होंने काफ़ी इंसार किया है तो देखना ये होगा कि आया कि इनके पास वो क्वालिटी बॉलिंग है आई थिंक बैटिंग इतनी है उनकी पावरफुल कि वो स्कोर्स कर सकते हैं लेकिन उनकी बॉलिंग पे अब ज़्यादा फोकस है बाबर किस तरह साइड को लीड करते हैं वो भी एक नया डिफरेंट सारा सीनारी है क्योंकि उनकी थियरी और थी 
बाबर आजम आते हैं अब उनके साथ डैरन सैमी हैं डैरन सैमी का बहुत बड़ा रोल है पिशावर में अब वो ट्रेंड कौन सेट करेगा कौन जो कहते हैं ना ब्रांड कौन डिफाइन करेगा क्योंकि डैरन सैमी आपको पता है पहले साल से ही इनके साथ हैं तो इनका उनका बहुत बड़ा हाथ है पिशावर जालमी में अब बाबर अपने आप को कितना इम्पोज करते हैं ये सारे सिनारीज अगले एक महीने में पता चलेंगे Well, Bazaar is talking about spinners, and he spoke about how Peshawar Zalmi is sort of relying on spinners this time, and Babar Azam's captaincy. Well, one guy who plays spin particularly well for Pakistan has been Shoaib Malik. You know, we're talking about his fitness, कितने fit लग रहे हैं, and generally all the experience that he has, I think he's a valuable addition to Karachi Kings. It's time to hear his thoughts now. है क्योंकि रिकवरी बहुत जरूरी है क्रिकेटिंग गोल अभी एक Two hundred wickets and six hundred T20 games. So let's see how it goes. Well, he's certainly an inspiration for all the young fans who want to come into cricket in terms of, you know, just fitness and how to carry yourself throughout the career. And now we'll be seeing him in Karachi Kings. Kit and jersey, so great to hear his thoughts. Aruj, quick predictions. What do you think? Uh, you know, what's going to be a good score on 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 this track? Oh, well, the captains did reflect on it, but I think they'll have to get something around the 175, 180 mark to put up a good uh, defence for them if they get there. 175, 180. That's what we saw yesterday as well. Quick thoughts, Bazit. If they get 175, 80, then I think they're winning the game. I don't think. That this Karachi pitch has played so well in the recent past. I'm hoping they'll be turned. I'm hoping there's something different because um, normally it's a very good batting. Wicket. All right, thank you so much, uh, both of you, for your thoughts. Uh, we're ready for all the action. We'll be taking a short break. I can tell you the buzz is fantastic. All of that after the short break. All the live action. <laughs> 